The listening part of occupational English test has three parts, and in each part you hear a number of different extracts. At the beginning of the test, you will hear a beep sound. You have time to read the questions before you hear the extracts. You will hear each extract once only. You have to complete your answers as you listen. At the end of each test, you will be given two minutes to check answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to his patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1, questions 1 to 12. You hear a doctor talking to a patient called Mr. Gonzalez. For questions 1 to 12, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hello, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. May I know your health problem? Well, doctor, I am a patient with end-stage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and I had a tracheostomy tube placement three months ago. I underwent treatment for acute exacerbation of the disease. Now, I am residing in an extended care facility with a capped tracheostomy tube. I need persistent oxygen administration and there has been some tenderness with the tracheostomy tube and difficulty in swallowing. I want it to be removed. Is there any airway issues while sleeping or uncapping the tube? No, doctor. What's your age? 59, doctor. Do you drink or smoke? I smoke and I was addicted to alcohol, but I have stopped it recently. Do you have any other disease history or treatments? Well, other than chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, I had hypercarbic hypoxernia, coronary artery disease, mitocardial infarction, and liver cirrhosis secondary to alcohol use. Okay, have you faced any surgery previously? Yes, doctor. Tontalectomy, adenoidectomy, cholecystectomy, appendectomy, hernia repair, and tracheostomy. Okay, brief me about any diseases that your family members have. Well, my family members have heart disease, coronary artery disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and cerebrovascular accident. Right. What medications are you taking now? Prevacid, folic acid, aspirin, morphine sulfate, pomicort, risperdal, coles, clonazepam, lotrazone, ronaxol, ambien, zolpidem tartrate, semethicone, rovitussin, and prednisone. Are you allergic to any medication? Yes, I am allergic to nitroglycerin. Well, physical investigation shows that blood pressure is 170 over 78, pulse rate is 96, and temperature is 98.6. There is a stable appearing tracheostomy tube site and the stoma appears to be without signs of infection. The previous incision was vertical in nature and there is no hypertrophic scar formation. No adenopathy noted. No stridor noted. Your diagnosis reports show you have end-stage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with a history of respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilatory support with tracheostomy tube placement. You have difficulty in tolerating tracheostomy tubes secondary to swallow discomfort and neck irritation with no further need for tracheostomy tube. You have a history of coronary artery disease, myocardial infarction, and cirrhosis of liver. I would recommend a limited bronchoscopy and then fiber octave laryngoscopy, but you may have trouble with the area healing or scarring, or you may have an emergent airway situation with the tube gone. That's okay with me, doctor. Anyway, I want to get the tube removed. Okay, 
That's good. Extract 2, questions 13 to 24. You hear a physician talking to a patient called Edward Corey. For questions 13 to 24, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hello doctor, good afternoon. Good afternoon, may I know your problem? Well doctor, I am a patient with coronary artery disease and peripheral vascular disease with prior stent supported angioplasty. I'm having a persistent cough for the past two weeks and some shortness of breath. I was also treated for pneumonia. Do you feel any chest pain, pressure, or heaviness in chest? No doctor. What's your age? 60 doctor. Do you smoke or drink? Well, I don't drink, but I'm a regular smoker. May I know your past medical history? Well, I have coronary artery disease since 2016, peripheral vascular disease for over 10 years, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and hypertension. Did you undergo any surgery in the past? Yes, right fern popliteal bypass about 8 years ago, neck fusion in the remote past, stent supported angioplasty to unknown vessel in the heart. What medications are you taking? Aspirin 81 mg daily, Clopidogrel 75 mg daily, Allopurinol 100 mg daily, Levothyroxine 100 mcg a day, Lisinopril 10 mg a day, Metroprolol 25 mg a day, Atorvastatin 10 mg daily. Are you allergic to any medicine? Yes, I cannot take aspirin because it is intolerant to my stomach. I get stomach upset. Okay, well, your physical examination result shows your body temperature is 97, heart rate of 90, blood pressure of 187 over 105. Cardiovascular studies show normal upstroke, distal pulse symmetrical. Heart regular with a normal S1 with normally split S2. There is an S4 at the apex. Lungs with decreased air entry, no wheezes, echocardiogram shows mild biatrial enlargement, normal thickening of the left ventricle with mildly dilated ventricle, EF of 40%, mild mitral regurgitation, and diastolic dysfunction grade 2. Nuclear stress study shows fixed infralateral defects, no reversible ischemia identified. Laboratory data shows normal white cells, hemoglobin 11, BUN of 12.1, creatinine of 0.8, troponin of 0.04, BNP of 5700. Your premature ventricular contraction is random. You had runoff three beats consecutive one time. The patient denied any awareness of that or syncope. Did you have any temporary loss of consciousness related to insufficient blood flow to the brain? We term it as syncope. No doctor, actually I'm unaware of it. Okay, you have cardiomyopathy, ischemic exacerbation of symptoms, electrophysiology study is required for ventricular tachycardia. Defibrillator will be determined at a later stage. Continue with metropolol with a little higher dose of 25 mg twice a day. Continue atorvastatin. Increase lisinopril to 20 mg daily to improve blood pressure management. Take hydralazine 50 mg for blood pressure management. Okay, thank you doctor. That is the end of part A. Now look at part B.
Part B. In this part of the test, you will hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare environment. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You will have time to read each question before you listen to the audio. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at the question 25. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining about lupus disease. Now read the question. Lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease in which the immune system becomes hyperactive and attacks healthy tissue, resulting in such as inflammation, swelling, and damage to skin, joints, blood, kidneys, the heart, and lungs. Normally, our immune system makes proteins called antibodies to protect and fight against antigens such as bacteria and viruses. However, lupus makes the immune system unable to differentiate between the healthy tissue and antigens, which leads the immune system to direct antibodies against the healthy tissue instead of antigens. Question 26. You hear a discussion between a doctor and a nurse on leukopenia disease. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. Can you explain to me what is leukopenia disease? Well, leukopenia is a condition where the patient has lesser white blood cells in their bloodstream, which is diagnosed with a blood test called a complete blood count. There are five types of white blood cells, and each of them protects the body from a different kind of infection. Neutrophils make up 55 to 70 percent of total white blood cells, and they fight off fungal and bacterial infections. Lymphocytes protect the body from viral infections. Monocytes are the largest of the white blood cells and they fight against bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And they mend tissue damaged by inflammation. Basophils are involved in inflammatory reactions to allergens. Eosinophils fight parasites and play a role in allergic reactions and conditions, such as asthma. Question 27. You hear a discussion between a doctor and a nurse on different stages of gout. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the different stages of gout? Well, there are various stages through which gout progresses. In the asymptomatic hyperuricemia stage, the person will elevated uric acid levels without any outward symptoms. The acute gout stage occurs when the urate crystals suddenly cause inflammation and intense pain. This condition is also called flare that can be triggered by alcohol and drug usage, stressful events, and due to cold weather. The intracritical gout is the period further urate crystals are being deposited in tissue. The main difference between gout and pseudogout is that the joints are irritated by calcium phosphate crystals instead of urate crystals. Chronic tophaceous gout is the most debilitating stage. Permanent damage might have occurred in the kidneys and joints. The patient can also develop tophi, big lumps of urate crystals in joints of the fingers. Pseudogout is the condition that is confused with gout. Question 28. You hear a discussion between a doctor and a nurse on different types of gum graft surgery. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the different types of gum graft surgery? 
Well, there are three types of gummed graft surgery. In the connective tissue grafts, the periodontist removes tissue from the roof of the mouth by making a flap and taking tissue from underneath the top layer, stitches the tissue onto the existing gum tissue to cover the exposed tooth root, stitches the flap on the roof of the mouth from where they took the tissue. The gingival grafts is preferred for the persons with thin gums that require extra tissue to enlarge the gums. In this method, the periodontist removes tissue directly from the top layer of tissue on the roof of the mouth and stitches this tissue to the existing gum area. Pedicle grafts method is often preferred for the individuals having lots of gum tissue growing near the exposed tooth. The periodontist grafts tissue from the gum around the tooth requiring treatment and partially cuts away the tissue, keeping one edge attached and stretches the tissue over or down covering the exposed tooth root and holding it in place with stitches. Question 29. You hear a discussion between two doctors about medical conditions that cause undigested food to appear in the stool. Now read the question. Doctor, please, can you explain medical conditions that cause undigested food to appear in the stool? Well, if a patient is having pancreatic insufficiency, it means they lack enzymes resulting in the inability to break down the food. Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease that causes inflammation in the digestive tract that can result in severe abdominal pain, diarrhea, and malnutrition. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder where our body becomes incapable to digest the protein known as gluten that is found in barley, wheat, and in certain other grains. If the digestive system of a person has lactose intolerance, then it becomes incapable to break down the milk and dairy protein. Irritable bowel syndrome is a common condition that affects the large intestine resulting in pain, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. Question 30. You hear a discussion between a doctor and a nurse about different procedures to detect blood clots. Now read the question. Hello doctor. What are the different procedures to detect blood clots? Well, a D-dimer blood test will measure a substance in the blood that can determine whether there is abnormal clotting activity somewhere in the bloodstream. Cardiac biomarker blood test is a blood test that can detect damage to the heart muscle. Compression ultrasound is a non-invasive test that can be performed and is often very useful in diagnosing deep vein thrombosis. Angiography or venography and catheterization techniques in which a dye is injected into a blood vessel where a clot is suspected, x-rays are also used to detect the clot. Echocardiography uses sound waves to get images of heart and are often used in patients who have had embolisms affecting an artery, especially in patients who have had an embolic stroke. A ventilation perfusion scan uses a radioactive dye to investigate blood flow to the lungs and can detect whether a pulmonary blood vessel has been blocked by a pulmonary embolus. CT scan is often the first test used to diagnose a stroke but is also useful for confirming a pulmonary embolus. MRI scans can be used to detect clots in blood vessels. That is the end of part B. Now look at part C. Part C. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear health professionals talking about specific aspects of their work. 
For questions 31 to 42, choose the answer A, B, or C which fits best according to what you hear. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at extract 1. Extract 1, questions 31 to 36. You hear the lecture given by a physician on the topic blood type classifications. You have 90 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. The human body contains about 10 pints of blood depending on the size of the individual. However, the blood composition is not the same in each individual. This is what makes the different blood types. The best method of grouping of blood is the ABO system, although there are other groups. Within the ABO group, there are four major categories that are divided into eight common blood types. A, B, O, and AB. Blood consists of cells and a yellow liquid known as plasma. The group of blood depends on what each part of the blood contains. There are two main blood group systems, ABO antigens and rhesus antigens. These two antigens are used to classify blood types. Normally, viruses and bacteria carry an antigen. During an infection, the antigen marks them as a foreign substance to the body that are usually not found in the body. Most red blood cell antigens are protein molecules on the surface of red blood cells. White blood cells produce antibodies as an immune defense. These antibodies target antigens and attack the foreign substance. Cross-matching of blood types is very crucial because if a patient receives red blood cells with antigens that is not present in his body, then it will reject and attack the new red blood cells. The ABO blood grouping method is used to determine the different types of antigens in the red blood cells and antibodies in the plasma. This system and RHD antigen status determine the blood type that will match for a safe red blood cell transfusion. There are four ABO groups. In group A, the surface of the red blood cells contains A antigen and the plasma has anti-B antibody that would attack any foreign B antigen containing red blood cells. In group B, the surface of the red blood cells contains B antigen and the plasma has anti-A antibody that would attack any foreign A antigen containing red blood cells. In group AB, the red blood cells have both A and B antigens, but the plasma does not contain anti-A or anti-B antibodies. Patients with type AB can receive any ABO blood type. In group O, the plasma contains both types of anti-A and anti-B antibodies, but the surface of the red blood cells does not contain any A or B antigens. Having none of these A or B antigens means that they can be safely transfused to a person with any ABO blood type. Some red blood cells contain the Rh factor, which is also called Rhd antigen. 
Therefore, recess grouping adds another dimension. In case the red blood cells contain the RHD antigen, they are RHD positive. If they do not contain RHD antigen, they are RHD negative. That means there are eight major blood types in the ABO slash RHD blood grouping system. For instance, in the US, 30% population are A positive, A plus. A negative occurs in 6% of people. There are only 9% of population with B positive, while B negative occurs in just 2% of the population. AB positive occurs in 4% of people and AB negative occurs in just 1% of people. O positive occurs in 39% of people while O negative occurs in just 9% of people. About 82% of the US population has RHD positive blood. O negative blood contains neither A or B or RHD antigens. Therefore, these red blood cells can be transfused to nearly all patients of any blood type. Group O negative is considered as the universal donor type. On the other hand, AB positive blood contains no anti-A or anti-B or RHD antibodies. Therefore, patients with this blood type can receive nearly any type of red blood cell transfusion. This type is referred to as the universal recipient type. In case a patient with group B antigen receives red blood cells from a person with group A antigen, their body will reject the transfusion. This is because patients with B antigen on their red blood cells have anti-A antibody in their plasma. The anti-A antibody in the plasma then attacks and destroys the A antigen donor red blood cells. During pregnancy, a mother may have a different RHD type to the fetus as the fetus can inherit a different blood group from the genes of the father. Therefore, a risk is involved if the mother is RHD negative and the fetus is RHD positive. A small amount of red blood cells from the fetus can enter the mother's bloodstream, resulting in creation of anti-RHD antibody in the plasma by the mother, which is known as sensitization. A problem will arise if this antibody then detects the foreign antigen in the blood cells of the fetus, and if they attack the red blood cells of the fetus as a defense mechanism, which can result in severe jaundice and brain damage if undetected. Therefore, an injection of anti-D immunoglobin G helps to prevent the production of this antibody in the mother and decrease the impact of a sensitizing event on the fetus. Anti-D immunoglobin G dosing is usually given at 24 weeks of the pregnancy and at times an additional dose during 34 weeks of pregnancy. The effect of anti-D immunoglobin G lasts up to 12 weeks. During blood test procedure, the patient's blood will be mixed with a variety of serum samples. Each serum sample consists of a different blood type with the clotting agent removed. Then, the reaction of the blood sample of the patient with the serum sample will be monitored. The antibodies in the serum will cause a different reaction in each one. For instance, if a reaction occurs when the blood sample is mixed with the serum consisting of blood type A, which contains anti-B antibody, the unknown blood type of the patient must be type B. Now look at extract 2, questions 37 to 42. You hear the monologue of a physician giving a lecture on the types of eczema. You have 90 seconds to read questions 37 to 42.
Eczema is not a single health condition. It is a recognizable reaction method seen in a number of skin diseases. Atopic dermatitis is a common cause of eczema that is more prevalent in the patients with asthma and hay fever. The signs and symptoms of eczema include tiny blisters or vesicles that can weep and ooze, eventually producing crusted, thickened plaques of skin. It is always quite itchy. It is significant to distinguish the different causes of eczema, as the effect of treatments will also differ. Eczema starts as red, raised, tiny blisters containing a clear fluid atop red, elevated plaques, and when these blisters break, the affected skin starts to weep and ooze. In chronic eczema, the blisters are less prominent and the skin is elevated, thickened, and scaling. There are about 11 distinct types of skin conditions that produce eczema. Atopic dermatitis tends to begin early in life with those with a predisposition to inhalant allergies, but it probably does not have an allergic basis. Characteristically, rashes occur on the cheeks, neck, elbow, and knee creases, and ankles. Irritant dermatitis occurs when the skin is repeatedly exposed to toxic substances or due to excessive washing. Allergic contact dermatitis occurs after repeated exposures to the same allergic substance. The immune recognition system becomes activated at the site of the next exposure and produces a dermatitis. Poison ivy allergy is a good example of allergic contact dermatitis. Stasis dermatitis commonly occurs on the swollen lower legs of patients who have poor blood circulation in the veins of the legs. Fungal infections can produce a pattern similar to many other types of eczema. However, the fungus can be visualized with a scraping under the microscope or grown in culture. Scabies is caused by an infestation by the human itch mite and produces a rash very similar to other forms of eczema. Pomphylix or dyshydriotic eczema is very common and affects the hands and occasionally the feet. By creating an itchy rash composed of tiny blisters on the sides of the fingers or toes and palms or soles. Lichen simplex chronicus produces thickened plaques of skin commonly found on the shins and neck. Numular eczema is a non-specific term for coin-shaped plaques of scaling skin most often on the lower legs of aged persons. In the xerotic eczema, the skin will crack and ooze due to excessive dryness. Sybaretic dermatitis produces a rash on the scalp, face, ears, and occasionally the mid-chest in adults. In infants, it produces a weepy, oozy rash behind the ears and are often quite extensive, involving the entire body. That is the end of part C. You now have two minutes to check your answers.